Well, uh, my name is Joel uh, Alwyn, and this is a joint work with Stefan Krenn, Krzysztof Pieterzak, and Daniel Wicks. So um, we heard in Daniela's talk already about the learning with errors uh, problem. So just basically, this is uh, just to see the notation that I'm going to use here. Um, pretty much, uh, so this is, uh, you know, you've got your matrix A, your secret vector S, a uniform vector U, and an error vector E, OK? And in this talk, I'm actually going to be focused on um, a very related uh, hardness assumption called learning with rounding, which uh, I'm going to derive now from learning with errors, OK? And it was first introduced by uh, Banerjee, Pikert, and Rosen last year. And it's based on the following intuition. When you have, uh, in learning with errors, when you add um, an error vector, uh, an error uh, uh, element E, um, to the result of this inner product of A times S, in some sense, really what you're doing is you're, you're kind of fuzzing the low order bits of, uh, of the result of this inner product, right? It's an element in ZQ. So the idea that they had was, well, instead of uh, you know, fuzzing these low order bits, why don't we just round them off, cut them off? Um, and that should be at least as hard as the original learning with error problem. And this has a couple of, adv uh, of advantages. Um, it's uh, deterministic and efficient, right? So uh, this should be good for constructing deterministic uh, cryptographic primitives, for, for example. So uh, to that end, um, let's define this uh, rounding function here. Um, and for now, um, it's just it's going to be for inputs from ZQ. And it's parameterized by an integer p, which is less than q. And yeah, uh, this is just how you compute it. And maybe pictorially, it's uh, easier to understand with an example. So here we have Z16 represented as, um, you know, as the circle. And um, we're going to round for P equals 2. And really what that does is it takes any given element in, from Z16 and it puts in one of two buckets. All right? So it's very coarse rounding here, um, either the green bucket or the blue bucket. Now, one thing to notice already is that if we have an error distribution here with very small errors, then most elements in Z16, if you round them or if you add error and round them, they'll still end up in the same bucket, right? So the only exception are these elements right here, which I've denoted with dotted lines. They will actually potentially, by adding an error, overflow into the next bucket, okay? So uh, I, sometimes I'll refer to this as like the overflow zone. All right, so this is, uh, this is how, you know, the idea behind the rounding, and now we can formulate the learning with uh, rounding assumption, and it's got the same parameters as learning with errors plus this extra integer p, and it's, uh, it has the same flavor, right? So it's, uh, it's the, 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 pr the challenge is to distinguish between two distributions, um, the matrix A together with A times S rounded, or the matrix A together with a uniform vector rounded, all right? So if P actually divides Q, then uh, uh, U rounded is, is just a random element, a uniform random element from ZP. Okay, so what do we know about it? Well, in the original paper where it was introduced, uh, we had some really nice constructions, very simple and efficient uh, PRGs and PRFs. And in a follow-up work, um, we also saw uh, deterministic encryption uh, from this assumption. Moreover, as far as hardness results go, um, the, the following observation was made in, uh, in, in the original paper, which is that if your error is small enough and your, course, your rounding is coarse enough, so you're cutting off enough bits, well then the distribution you get from just rounding a uniform element or rounding a uniform element plus error are actually statistically close, right? So let's see what this means when you actually start looking at the, the uh, learning with rounding assumption. Well, if you round the matrix A times the secret S, that's statistically close to rounding the matrix A times S plus errors, all right? And so now you can just use learning with errors to replace A times S plus errors with the uniform, with a uniform element. So this is, this is kind of the core idea behind the uh, re original reduction that learning with errors implies learning with rounding in uh, the BPR paper. Now, um, one issue uh, with this approach is that you're going to need the bucket size to be really big, in fact, super polynomial, because you need the probability that you fall into this overflow zone with a uniform random element to be really small, negligible. So this has a couple of consequences, problematic consequences. For example, the, the, 
the modulus Q needs to be super polynomial, which means that computing your inner product is not going to be so efficient as it might otherwise be for smaller moduli. Also, the modulus to error ratio is going to be super polynomial, which means that, well, intuitively, your learning with errors problem is, is not as hard as you might like because you're really only adding a small amount of error. And in particular, when you push uh, this re reduction to gap SVP from Regev, if you push that through, what you end up with is a super polynomial approximation factor, which is also not so great. And uh, finally, what you, another consequence here is that your rounding is really coarse. So what does that mean? It means that you're really cutting off a lot of bits for every LWR sample. So you're, you're kind of not producing a lot of output bits for every given sample. So this is, this is something we'd like to improve. And in fact, in this work, we develop a new technique based on a lossy sampler, which we can use to get a new reduction from um, showing that learning with errors implies learning with rounding. And some of the properties we get is that it actually goes through also for polynomially sized Q. Um, and moreover, as an added bonus, we also get that it works for small secrets, not just uniform over the entire ZQ space, but even small secrets. And they don't even have to be uniform. They can just have high conditional min entropy. Using the same technique, we actually also get some new applications of the learn, uh, so constructions of learning with rounding. In particular, we get uh, reusable computational extractors, uh, some lossy trapdoor functions, really nice and simple and elegant, um, and also uh, nice, simple deterministic encryption. Um, and they enjoy a certain uh, smooth security degradation. Maybe I'll have time to get to that. We'll see. So what's, what's the idea behind this reduction? Well. Um, OK, we, we said that we want this to work for polynomially sized Q. Well, that's, that means we're, we're going to have problems if we use the old approach, because the probability that you end up in this overflow zone now is noticeable, right? Because uh, your, your bucket sizes aren't that big. They can't be that big anymore. Q over P can't be that big, because Q is only polynomial. So we need kind of a new approach here to, go, uh, to show uh, this hardness. And what we do is. We, we design a new algorithm, and uh, it's a, we call it a lossy sampler, all right? And using that, um, I, I'll convince you in a moment that this reduction um, uh, works, right? We, we, we can, or we, I'll show you the reduction, right? So the main thing is to understand what this algorithm does, okay? And it's got two properties, all right? The algorithm, it, it samples a matrix called A tilde to distinguish it from the, the uniform matrix A. And the first property is that um, this A tilde um, is indistinguishable, computationally indistinguishable from a uniform matrix A over the same domain. Okay? And this holds under the learning with errors assumption. And then the second pr uh, property is that um, if I tell you A tilde, and then I also tell you A tilde times some secret vector rounded, this is still going to preserve a lot of the entropy that was in the secret. Okay, so this is, this is a, st a statistical property. So that's, that's the two properties that our lossy sampler has, or the output of our lossy sampler, okay? And now I'm going to show you um, that given such an algorithm, um, we can show that learning with errors already implies that learning with rounding is hard, okay? So the first thing I do here is I take, remember our goal is to show that this distribution is computationally indistinguishable from this distribution. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this up and I'm going to separate out the bottom line. Okay, so A is uh, a vector here, and uh, this is just the inner product of A times S rounded. Okay, so I haven't done anything. I've just kind of changed notation a little bit to separate out the bottom line. And then you, the first thing we do is we use the first property of our lossy sampler here to replace the matrix A with uh, a matrix A tilde sampled by the lossy, lossy sampling algorithm. And we can do this um, just as, uh, uh, did I write this? Yeah, by uh, learning with errors, using the learning with errors assumption, right? And now the second thing we do is, uh, in the second step, well, we see here that the top part is exactly this. It's A tilde and A tilde S rounded, and so there's still a lot of entropy left in S, okay? That's the second property. And A times S, the inner product of AS, that's actually a, a good extractor, okay? And so we know that S still has entropy given the top part, and so A times S looks like a uniform element, statistically. Right? So this is the combination of, a second, of the second property and a uh, standard extractor argument. Right? So this, this is where we, we make the transition in the bottom row um, to a uniform element. Well, now we just use the first property again to replace A tilde with the matrix A. Okay? 
So, so we end up with this. So what did we do here? We went for the bottom row, or the bottom, the bottom elements of these, this tuple to the bottom elements of this tuple. So by doing this for every single row in, uh, in here, we'll end up with this distribution, okay? So basically, it boils down to we need to, make, we need to have this lossy sampler. That's, that's what we would need to make this go through, this, this reduction. And how do we do that? Well, we borrow ideas from um, uh, Gentry et al.'s paper, GKPV, and um, it works as follows. We're gonna build our, uh, our uh, matrix A tilde, um, essentially as a bunch of uh, uh, learning with errors samples themselves. So we've got our, uh, you can think of C as a, as a, um, a matrix of, of learning with errors secrets. Uh, B was what we formerly called the matrix A, and F is, are just errors, okay? So intuitively, why is this, you know, why is this, why is it going to be lossy when we multiply? So first of all, the learning with errors uh, assumption here immediately tells us that um, A tilde looks like a uniform matrix A, right? Because this is just a bunch of learning with errors samples. But maybe uh, to get some intuition about why the second property holds, so why, why is the entropy of S preserved if you multiply by A tilde and then do rounding? Well, you can think of it like this. Um, B is kind of uh, a tall matrix, and C is short and wide, okay? And F has a bunch of small entries. So when you multiply A tilde by S, well, F is small. So F times S, that, most of that gets rounded off. And so what you're left with is B C times S. And the thing is that C is shrinking, right? So it takes N elements from ZQ, and it maps it to N prime. And we said that N prime is less than N. So you're losing information about S here when you multiply by C. And then the matrix B expands that again, so you're back to the dimension that you'd expect. All right, so this is the intuition why, this, this gives you some intuition behind why multiplying by A tilde would actually be lossy, okay? So um, let's look at, uh, you know, maybe some, uh, just some high level look at how we actually prove this, this second property. So our goal is to show that the min entropy of S conditioned on both A tilde and A tilde S rounded is still large. Okay? And to do this, we use a, kind of a reconstruction argument. So we, what we do is we actually give you more information than A tilde, A tilde S uh, rounded, and we show that even condition, and, and from that information, you could reconstruct these, these two values, and we show that even conditioned on this extra information, S still has uh, high entropy. Okay? So now I'm going to show you which information we give you um, uh, from which we know you can reconstruct these values and also from which it's now easy to show that S still has high min entropy, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we give you the matrices B, C, and F, all right? Now B, C, and F, it's great. They're independent of S, right? So you're not leaking anything about S here. And from B, C, and F, you can already reconstruct A tilde. So the next thing we'd give you would be C times S. Um, and that's nice because, again, C is shrinking, right? So C times S is only N prime elements um, from ZQ instead of N elements. So there's still got to be some entropy in S left, even if I told you C times S. Moreover, with C times S, you can already reconstruct BCS rounded, okay? But, of course, that's not exactly what you have here. You've got A tilde S rounded. So what is, what's the difference between BCS rounded and A tilde S rounded? Well, at certain BCS rounded, remember, it's a vector. And certain components in that vector might have ended up in an overflow zone. And then when you add the FS part, you'll actually go into the next bucket, which means that the rounding will actually result in a different value. Okay? So the last thing we'll tell you is exactly those components. I'll tell you the positions in this vector BCS in where, where there was an overflow. And I'll tell you the new value of the rounding. Okay? So together with this set Z, you can now reconstruct, so Z and, and uh, when you've reconstructed BCS rounded, you can now actually also reconstruct AS tilde. So really the question now becomes, how big is this set Z, right? Because if we, can, if we can bound the size of Z to be small enough, well then we're done. Then it's easy to tell how much entropy is left in S. So how, how can we do that? How can we uh, bound the size of Z? Well, pretty easy. We, we just make the buckets big enough such that if you take m random samples in ZQ, um, chances are, on average, maybe one will cross over into a new bucket. Okay? So, so a noticeable but constant size amount will, will end up in the overflow zone. 
And so what does that mean? Well, it means with high probability, this set Z will have less than n prime elements, okay? And so Z, I can tell you all of Z, writing, writing it down in bits, using n prime, O of n prime times log Q bits, okay? So really, you're not getting that much information from this set Z because it's small. I only need a few number of bits to actually write it down. So what does that mean? Well, going back to what our goal was, our goal is to, again, bound this entropy of S. Well, I can rewrite it in terms, I can, I can, you know, I can bound this min entropy by this min entropy, right? Because we can reconstruct using those. And then we know that CS, this, this value CS, this vector, really only, it, it has n prime times log qubits, so the entropy can only decrease by at most that much. And, it, and if I remove Z, again, we know that Z is of similar size, so if I don't tell you Z, then the entropy can really only increase by that much. And BCF are independent of S. So you're not learning anything about S from, from those guys. So, so there we have it. We have that, uh, you know, you, you really only lose O of N prime times log Q um, if you condition on these values. So this, this, is, uh, this is basically how the lossy sampler works and why that second property holds. And um, now I'll turn quickly to some of the applications, uh, which again use uh, uh, the same technique. And in particular, uh, we construct lossy trapdoor functions. All right, so we just saw um, in one of the previous talks what these are. These are, briefly, these are functions that have two modes, either an injective mode or a lossy mode. And um, really one thing to notice here is that the function evaluation is super simple, right? It is essentially the learning with rounding assumption is the, the, the evaluation of the, uh, of the function. So um, uh, in our lossy, uh, to, to uh, sample the, the key in uh, the injective mode, we use uh, the results of Michiancho and Pikert uh, to sample A together with a trap door, that, which lets you invert. And to sample uh, the public key in the lossy mode, we just use our lossy sampler, right? And I just showed you that the lossy sampler, uh, if you multiply by uh, the output of the lossy sampler, then you, uh, you preserve a lot of the entropy, so it's still lossy. Um, right, so I should probably say that we use a slightly different uh, non-standard notion of lossy trapdoor functions where we don't bound the size of the range. We, um, it's like entropic lossy trapdoor functions. So we just say that um, in lossy mode, the input still has a lot of entropy given the output, right? Um, but it turns out that uh, for most applications we know of, um, you, can, you can still use also this uh, entropic version of lossy trapdoor functions. Right, so our construction, as I said, it's, uh, you know, it's much simpler. Um, we also get uh, more lossiness uh, compared to uh, previous uh, learning with errors-based lossy trapdoor functions. And we get uh, smooth security degradation. What that means is if you fix uh, the parameters in the injective mode, um, the amount of lossiness that you get, that's based on a learning with errors assumption and the, the, hard, the, the security parameter of that learning with errors assumption is not actually fixed yet. It's only fixed in the proof when you, uh, when you do your lossy sampling, right? So for what that means is like for fixed parameters that you're actually gonna use, the amount of security you get um, is only, it's only gonna be fixed in the, in the proof. It's not actually fixed in the parameters that you use. So that's, that's the kind of lossy degradation uh, that I was talking about. Um, we also get similar results for uh, these uh, cousins of the lossy trapdoor function, the all but one um, functions. Uh, and uh, we use there the ABB trick um, for uh, embedding the lossy branch. So other, other um, uh, applications are we also get reusable extractors and uh, deterministic encryption. Um, the construction's actually the same as uh, the previous one, but uh, we have a tighter analysis, and so we also can use a weaker uh, a learning with errors assumption, and we also have this uh, smooth degradation property, similar to what I just uh, described for lossy trapdoor functions, which in particular means that message entropy is not fixed uh, during, so the amount of message entropy that your deterministic encryption scheme requires is not fixed during the setting of the parameters. That's just fixed in your proof. So, thank you.